to our program today. I'm Joe Kuyabi, your Mill Creek Township Supervisor. It's my honor and privilege today to be able to welcome two fine guests from the Westlake Fire Department. Uh, Chief Kurt McCasin, thank you for coming today. Thanks for having us, Joe. Appreciate you being here and what you do for our community. And also then we have the Chairman of the Board of Directors, Cliff Joslin. Cliff, it's nice having you here. Thank you, Joe. Many people probably recognize Cliff because Cliff was also our Streets Department Superintendent for many, many years. Got to learn a lot of things from him and it's a pleasure to have you here to talk about a fine department. Gentlemen, one of the things, and, and Chief, I'm going to ask you first. Uh, I know this year is very special to Westlake Fire Department and the area, uh, but 75 years of service to this community and one of the very first fire departments uh, to be able to start with Mill Creek Township, it's an honor to have you guys on your fire department. Can you give us a little history as to 75 years and, and what's really taken place at Westlake? Sure, Joe. Uh, it started back in June of 1937. Uh, a group of neighbors got together, uh, obviously citing a need. Uh, before the department was formed, they had a, a bucket brigade, uh, so we're told. Uh, but in June of 1937, they, they formed. Uh, the first station was uh, part of a gas station at 12th and Powell, Delaney's service station. Uh, the first chief, was uh, his name was Larmino. Um, and things have evolved very rapidly since then. Uh, back in the 40s, they moved from 12th and Powell to uh, our present location of the main station at 8th and Powell. Uh, we built a substation in 1955 at 12th and Peninsula. And in 1976, there was uh, a, a major raising and a new station built at, at the, the main one at 8th and Powell. Um, our territory now includes uh, Pittsburgh Avenue on the east, Woodside Drive on the west, the railroad tracks on the south, and Lake Erie, including Prescott State Park to the north. Um, we average about mm, about 1,400 calls a year right now. Um, the great number of those being EMS, emergency medical calls, uh, but we do still have our fair share of fires. Um, but we're, again, rather proud to, to be the first one uh, in Mill Creek, and uh, we're having a trying to have a special year in commemoration of the 75th. Chief, you guys also cover Prescott, correct? Correct. Everything that's going on down there, whether fire rescue, water rescue, and there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about as far as water rescue and, and some of the equipment. Um, one of the things that I hear as a township supervisor, I'm very proud, uh, is to be able to say that people think that you're a paid department, and you're not. It's all volunteers that are doing this um, every day. When, when the call goes out, there are volunteers that show up, and we're very proud to have you guys as part of Mill Creek Township and, and one of the very first fire departments that we've ever had here. Um, some of the things that are going on um, in the community and, and some of the things that uh, will be happening and may have happened and maybe you missed it, and we're sorry for that, but Cliff, why don't you tell us about uh, one of the special events that, that will be coming up, um, and, and if they missed it uh, or they do miss it, that they'll be able to uh, get some information on. Mm -hmm. Well, October 6th, and like Joe said, the, uh, this program may be on uh, after that, so, if, and if it is, you can still come to the firehouse. We have a kids' day. Uh, it's just not for kids, it's for adults and, and everybody, and if you come after the fact, you can still get plenty of materials uh, to take home and for fire prevention, and that's also during fire prevention week. So. Uh, the kids will be getting it in school. We go to the schools with fire prevention materials. And y you can come to the firehouse and get uh, a lot of those materials if you want. One of the things, and, and if, you're, if you can't make it and you haven't been able to make it, let me just encourage you. Some of the things that will be going on at the open house, um, the Mill Creek Paramedic Service, uh, they'll be there, the Erie County Sheriff's Department, uh, with their horses. Uh, they'll definitely be there, and the, and the kids love that all the time. The Erie Airport Crash Truck, the Erie County Safe Kids Coalition, Mill Creek Police Department, the, um, they'll have different things like the sports arena for the kids, dunking tank. That's one thing. 
I seen at the bottom of the list, I said a dunking tank. <laughs> I didn't get an invitation, so I think I'm safe yet, guys. Um, might raise a lot of money because there's probably a lot of people like to dunk me in that tank. But the Coast Guard will be there, Erie County Hazmat, Erie County 911, and the Red Cross. Um, one of the things, too, with that, that I think is not on this list, and I know that I've been to some of the open houses, and I think Stat Medivac will be flying in also. Uh, we are trying to get them, of course, okay. with our busy schedule, uh, and, and we just may get them, but that's still up in the air. Yet. So if you missed it, sorry you missed it. If you can make it, that's great, and if not, next year, you guys do it every year, correct? Every other year. Every other year they yeah. do it. So mm -hmm. you make plans for it, put it on your calendar right now. If you have missed it, you need to show up because there's a lot of things uh, that they do down there. Uh, to let you know how they serve our community. One of the things that I do want to talk about, Chief, is, is the uh, technical rescue stuff uh, that the fire department, I mean, people don't realize, number one, with the water and you guys having to take care of that, the, the peninsula basically, um, what goes on? So when you say technical rescue stuff, what does Westlake have that they actually do when it comes to te technical rescues? Well, technical rescue is really a kind of a broad-based term. Um, we, we do auto extrication. We have hearse tools um, and extrication tools for rescuing people out of vehicles from a traffic accident. Um, we have a confined space uh, and trench rescue trailer that uh, Cliff is very instrumental in. Um, it took uh, great time to put together this program. Um, that we're proud of uh, as well. And one that we're really getting all very involved in is uh, the waterfront. Um, just all too often we stand on shore and the helpless feeling of not being able to assist uh, has prompted us to move in a direction of watercraft. We have an ice rescue boat for ice rescues. Uh, we acquired two jet skis this summer that uh, we've added to the fleet and we've also put in a grant for a, uh, uh, a boat that has wheels so that it you don't necessarily have to go to a dock or a specific location to launch the boat. Uh, we're hopeful that we get that grant but again we've identified uh, a need with the water and uh, some delayed responses from various mutual aid people, whether it's the Coast Guard or assisting departments. Um, we have access to the lake at the bottom of our street and uh, we just feel that it, it would be a, a, a much quicker response to a time of need. Yeah, now, one of the things that I do want to say and talk a little bit about, and you brought it up, is the mutual aid stuff that we do, that you do, um, with the fire department and other companies. Um, the air rescue boat, I know you said it's for ice rescue, but um, you know what a helpless feeling to have someone walking on the ice, go through the ice, and not be able, I know that you participate with the Coast Guard. Um, is there any other uh, agencies that you guys, uh, it, it, let's say that it is an ice rescue, you. I know the Coast Guard probably would be there. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, but I know you guys have that, that new boat. Um, is there anybody else that would be participating with you in a rescue like that? Uh, we would rely on the Lakeshore Fire Department. We would rely on Lake City Fire Department. They both have uh, uh, recognized teams through the state uh, for water rescue. Uh, and they've trained countless hours on just regular water and also ice. So again, that's mutual aid, um, where they would probably call on us as well uh, if they had a specific need for the for the boat. We have the uh, the uh, suits, the all weather suits. So um, it's uh, it's something that uh, I don't want to say that wasn't thought of before, but we've identified needs now, and we're able to handle these needs. Now, now that airboat, that, that airboat was designed for, air, for ice rescues, but it is a mm -hmm. boat that could go out anytime it needs to. It could. It depends on the conditions of the lake. Okay. Um, the seas will dictate that. It's a flat bottom boat with a Kevlar hull. It's meant to travel over the ice okay. and not get damaged. 
um, because it is flat bottomed, it doesn't have very it, the seaworthiness is not that good. About two foot, two to three foot is the the max on okay. that. Good. Yeah, you That's go good three foot or more, you're going to get wet. Yeah, it, although no it's a, a cabin and mm -hmm. covered with a heater in it. Over three foot, you're going to get wet. Right. Hey, you know, it's got a seven foot fan on the back. The motor is a 327 Chevy engine with a 350 horse. So. Yeah. Something's going to happen when they throttle it up. <laughs> yep, you got that right. <laughs> Cliff, one of the things that uh, I have on this list that I, I thought was very interesting when we talked, and, and I want to talk a little bit about it, is when people have a fire, um, you know, and, and uh, God forbid, but those things do happen, and it happens every day. When they have a fire, I understand you're putting together a book um, explaining what people need to do or how to do it or where to go and it's an informational book is it not? We It, it is an information book and what had happened was we had one of our fellows a long time ago go to Florida and he came back with a partial book and this uh, Florida Fire Department wanted to team up with us and write this book so we wrote it in conjunction with them we published it put it out everybody liked it so uh, I'm done with that book now. The chief has to go through it and add his comments. As soon as he does that, we'll take it to the board of directors and then possibly send everybody in our area a copy. If we don't do that, we will certainly, when we go on a fire call, even if it's just a fire alarm, we'll hand these people a book. A book. And what it does is tell them if they have a small fire and a smoke gets in their clothes, what to wash their clothes with. Uh, it tells, you know, their woodwork and everything that they, they can clean, use different cleaners, and it's a really informational book. It tells how to get that smell out of that house so that mm -hmm. they don't have to hire someone and spend a lot of money. They can right. do it themselves. Yeah. Well, the insurance will, will play big, but, you know, do you have enough insurance? Or do you yeah. have insurance? Or do you have insurance? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we talked about, Chief, and, and I'll go back to you on this one, is the jet skis. I know that uh, was a hot topic. Uh, we've had a hot summer. Um, and again, we stand on the shores and we, and we hear that there's a need. Um, you know, the, the new jet skis, have they been effective this year? Um, what do you see them doing and, and how have they benefited the Westlake Fire Department this year? Joe, uh, thanks for asking, and thanks to the Board of Supervisors for permitting uh, the the use or the uh, for us to obtain them. Uh, they trained uh, probably for 60 hours on the machines this summer. Um, they were effective in a rescue, even before they were technically in service. Um, we brought them to a call that we had on the bay for a uh, kayaker that had uh, overturned. So, uh, in my mind, they've paid for themselves the use already. Mm -hmm. We've made one rescue, we've saved one life. Um, again, the conditions of the, the lake or the bay will dictate whether we respond with them or not. I think they've come up with uh, a number between five and seven feet is the max that we're gonna allow anybody to go out and attempt any kind of a rescue in. Uh, but again, the conditions will dictate. Yeah. But we found that we are able to, to launch from the foot of Powell Avenue. We can launch from the campgrounds. We can launch from Presque Isle. Very maneuverable, very flexible. Um, and again, they're fast. Uh, getting to somebody quickly, knowing what to do when you get there, um, it's definitely going to pay off. It's all about saving someone's life. It is. And if I could just add, Joe. Sure. You know, people will ask and, and wonder, why do we have all this equipment? Well, number one, when we get to the scene, of no matter what it is, whether it's a trench rescue, confined space rescue, uh, where we have to use the jet skis or the, the uh, uh, ice boat, you know, the chief gets there or one of his deputies, or it may be a lieutenant, it may be just a fireman that's ahead of that call, they're expected to do something. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the equipment to work with, how are you gonna do it? Right. Uh, last year alone, I believe it was Chief, where we had the three, the two drownings and the one with three kids in it near drowning. Yeah, we had three rescues in one week. Wow. In one week with two deaths and then we had some kids who were out in a little boat and turned over and could have been three more. Luckily, yeah. uh, 
they confiscated, if I want to say. Uh, commandeered. Commandeered a uh, jet ski off the beach and went out and got these three individuals. Uh, and they, I know that, yeah. I, I know the mutual aid with, with Westlake and other departments. I know they have a nice boat um, that they can also assist you guys in. But you're right, it's, you're standing there, you see someone that has a need, and you feel so helpless to be able, but now with the jet skis, like you said, mm -hmm. Chief, it's, you know, so much faster getting out on those things yep. and, you know, and weather permitting, because number one is making sure that everyone that goes out comes back home safe. Mm -hmm. That's correct. It's one of the rules in the firehouse. We want to bring our people back home safe, but then be able to serve the community and with the peninsula and the people, and th hundreds of thousands of people that visit, uh, having the right equipment at the right time might just save someone's life. Well, I don't think people realize how fast this lake can change. Oh. I recently bought myself a boat, a 21-footer, and you know I'm always watching the skies. Because this lake, I can go out and it could be less than a foot waves and all of a sudden, boom, this wind turns around and you've got three and four, five footer. And people maybe from Pittsburgh or out of town don't realize how fast it can change mm -hmm. and they get caught. Yeah. One thing, Cliff, I know of, of with you being here for so many years and, and working with you and having the honor to work with you, one thing that's been a passion is trench rescue. Mm -hmm. um, even when you were here as a superintendent for the streets department, um, there's not there are not many people out there, but we hear about it in the news a couple times a year where someone gets into a ditch um, because everyone's in a hurry today to get something done and things happen and they go sour. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to those listeners that are here, that are watching today, um, what is trench rescue? What's it all about? And what's the common goal um, um, for the trench rescue? Staff? So a trench rescue is anything over four foot deep. You've got to have it secured with uh, either wood or, or metal panels. In the trailer, we have all of that. We have the air air screws and, and the air jacks and the whole works. Uh, we've had two calls. One was down to McCain. A uh, fellow was buried up to his neck. Uh, it was pretty decent because we, we got him out. Uh, they flew him to Hammett. He walked out of the hospital and was back in the firehouse in two hours. Wow. Great recovery. We had another child down at Albion we got called for. Uh, he was sitting on the side of this bank. His shoe fell in and he went down to get it. And Luckily, they got them out before we got there, but you know that's one of those specialized pieces of equipment the trailer has all in it that we can go, and a specialized team, along with trench and confined space is pretty much the same. People don't realize that portable radios that we carry do not work underground. You have to have a special uh, hardwired that we take with us and actually wear it to uh, underground, and that's how we can speak to the people above ground. So, you know, we're, we're how do we train in all this? Uh, the chief has a tough job, I'll tell you. Uh, they try to get everything in in a year. Uh, I still teach for the State Fire Academy, and we try to pick out a night, and we ask for the township to dig us a couple holes during mm -hmm. the year, and they're very, very thankful, we're thankful for that, you know, so we can get that training in. and. You know, the specialties not everybody has. Hey, you said so, that you went yeah. to McCain Township, and where was the little boy at? He was in Albion. Albion. Mm -hmm. um, so are we the only one? Is Westlake, I mean, I mean, each of the departments, I think, have a little bit of a specialty item, mm -hmm. uh, but is Westlake basically for Erie County? Is We're the only one in Erie County, and Crawford County have asked us if we uh, would cover for them. Okay. So if we get a call for, from Meadville or Crawford County to go, we'll go. Okay, that's nice I mean, to know. You know, that's neighboring. So yeah. really, when we talk to the fire department chief, when we talk to you guys, and, and when we have you in and to discuss things, it's not just the, the good old days with the Bucket Brigade putting out a fire. It's life-threatening life instances, anything. It could be something on the water. It could be something in an accident, car accident. Um, with the tools that you have now, it's something trench rescue, confined space. I mean, it's like, don't think of just fire anymore. You know, Joe, you're right. You almost have to be a jack of all trades. Um, in paid departments, the, the personnel know what they're going to be on every day. They, most every day they come to work. Either you're going to ride the engine, you're going to drive the truck, you're going to be on the ladder truck. 
with the volunteers, we don't know what we're going to be doing from one call to the next. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, we could be on a water rescue, we could be on a dumpster fire, we could be on a, a house fire with people trapped, and each person having a different responsibility on each one of those calls. That's why it's it, it, dire that we keep up on our training. Um, train, 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 we have to keep doing it. People may be watching right now and they said, geez, I didn't realize that it was volunteer. Uh, and when I think of volunteering, it's not just, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not just volunteering to be a firefighter or someone that can do the rescue in the boat or the, the jet ski. I think that you guys, if, if someone's able and willing to do anything um, and they stop at the firehouse, they're, you know, they're welcomed in and, and you can find a job for them? We haven't done that yet, but we're, we're really looking for into that. Okay. Um, it's more specifically with uh, like the divers, scuba diving, that's that's something very rare that um, again if we have people in the community that that's something they do and they would like to do it for the township, uh, we would certainly entertain having them come on board for that. I, I just got the five minute notice and there's so much more I want to talk about but I'm just going to touch on one thing right now. New apparatus that we have at the Westlake Fire Department. A um, couple pieces of new equipment. Explain what you got and why, why we have them now. Joe, what we did, uh, uh, which was a, kind of a, a groundbreaking thing, at least for us, we obtained two brand new pieces last year. Uh, we, we got rid of a 102-foot aerial ladder truck, 1989, and replaced it with a 75-foot ladder truck. Uh, the 102 had a tandem rear end and it was rather difficult to maneuver on our township side streets. Uh, this 75 footer has a single axle um, and it is much more maneuverable. It's basically like driving one of our pumpers, but it has a ladder on top. And with the rescue, um, the other, the one that we, that we got rid of, uh, it was getting up in age. There was nothing wrong with it, but again, age was becoming a factor maintenance and we replaced it with a unit that uh, has much more compartment space um, it is able to carry uh, I believe four people in the back uh, of the unit um, it's just a newer unit um, and it's got all of our rescue equipment for car accidents airbags etc um, just to modernize the fleet um, we spent <laughs> Eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Excuse me, nine hundred. Yeah, nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars on both of these pieces of equipment. Um, of course, we spread that out over a period of time, but uh, that's one of the main reasons that we send out the the flyers yearly is mm -hmm. for new equipment yeah. uh, for our fund drive, and that's why it's imperative. Uh, that everybody try and give and contribute as much as they possibly can. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you. Um, I know our time is almost up mm -hmm. um, and, and there's so many other questions I could ask, um, but I do sincerely want to say thank you to you, Chief, um, Cliff, also to you and what you guys do for Mill Creek Township. If you're watching the program today and you can contribute uh, to their fund drives, please don't take that for granted. It is not a paid fire department. They are volunteers and they're here to help save you, rescue you, help in any area that they can. You've heard today from water rescues to car accidents, fires, um, and I know that ladder truck is probably taking even cats out of trees. <laughs> um, but with that, um, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Board of Supervisors, we appreciate what you guys do for us and how you serve our community. So until next time, uh, we'll have to do this again. Um, stay tuned, and we'll have you guys back. So thank you for watching the show today. And if you can, please contribute to our volunteer fire companies.